We do know that bees are sensitive to magnetic fields. We know that within their bodies they contain particles of, of magnetite. And laboratory studies have shown that they are indeed sensitive to magnetic fields. And you can sh demonstrate in a in, in laboratory that if you artificially create a magnetic field, you can control the way that they build their comb. And it seems logical that bees are using magnetic fields in navigation. The delicate balance of life on Earth is perfectly illustrated by reliance on bees and their pollination of plants. It's hypothesized that without bees, life wouldn't stand much of a chance. Insect pollination is needed for really all the things that make eating interesting. So all the fruits, the nuts uh, and uh, things like that all require insect pollination and bees are the most important group of pollinators. bees weren't here, if, if the bees, we'd have a very boring diet. Yes, we, we would have a very thin existence, I think that's the point, without bees. And of course, as well as the food that we need to eat, uh, they're pollinating wild plants as well. And in many cases, we don't know details about the pollination of, of wild plants, but we can be sure that without bees to pollinate them, many of our wild plants would disappear. Frazier, the Senior Extension Associate for Beekeeping at Pennsylvania State University. What are the classic criteria of colony collapse disorder so that any beekeeper can go out there and look at their bees and say, this looks like a pretty classic case of this? The symptoms are that the bees are relatively healthy and strong, and in a very short period of time, the adult bee population disappears from the colony. It leaves the colony. And what it leaves behind is a lot of brood, meaning the young bees, honey, and pollen. On what continents has this uh, colony collapse disorder been observed? Well, the decline of honeybees has occurred actually um, worldwide. We've seen many other countries report declines in honeybees. Whether or not it's truly due to this thing called colony collapse disorder, which is a pretty unique set of uh, criteria, is another question. And that's one of the things we're trying to understand by trying to communicate with other people in other parts of the world. The sort of current concern particularly dates from about 2006, and particularly in the United States, where a lot of commercial beekeepers suddenly found that their bees had been healthy at one point in the year and then in late summer just suffered these spectacular losses and and they appeared to be different from anything that had been seen before so people were just going to their hives and finding there were no bees at all colony collapse disorder has affected hives all around the world with some countries reporting losses of up to 70 percent a variety of reasons have been offered as to its cause but none of them have been able to conclusively explain why all of a sudden bees don't return to their hives. Apart from one, a sensational piece of research by Joseph Kuhn and his team. In an experiment, the doctor worked with eight beehives and placed a regular home deck phone inside half of them. The scientists then monitored if the presence of a deck phone would affect the way that bees return to their hive. The results were astonishing. In the hives where no deck foam was present, the bees returned at a normal rate. But in the hives which contained a deck foam, the bees hardly returned at all. In one hive containing a deck foam, not a single bee returned. To fully understand the relevance of Dr. Kun's experiment, we must first understand how a deck foam works. The reason you are able to walk around your home talking on your deck phone is because the base station of the deck phone sends electromagnetic frequency waves called microwaves to the handset. This is exactly the same way that a mobile phone mast 
communicates with a mobile phone. A deck phone is basically a miniature version of a mobile phone mast. If a bee is affected by what comes out of a deck phone, it will most definitely be affected by what comes out of a mobile phone mast. And with 4 billion mobile phone users around the world, all of a sudden, there are an awful lot of mobile phone masts. The bee's magnetic sense allows it to navigate using the magnetic lines of the Earth, an ability it has spent millions of years fine-tuning and developing. Does it stand to reason, then, that such an acute sensitivity would be affected by even the slightest change in the electromagnetic environment? So what about a gargantuan change, and one which has happened almost overnight?